On the Back of a Tiger, Episode 1, Deep Dive. Hello. Hi, Ray. It's uh, Brad and Jeremy. Hi. uh, How are you? uh, Very good. Yeah, so we were just wondering if you could generally describe the association induction hypothesis in the most basic way and, and why it's so important. Um, uh, uh, association refers to the um, relation between two uh, charged particles, two, two uh, uh, electric uh, uh, negative and positive particles. Uh, when you dissolve sodium chloride in water, uh, they dissociate more completely the more highly diluted they are. Uh, so when they're concentrated, they tend to get pushed into association more often. Uh, and the idea of the association uh, in, in the cell is that you have proteins very close to each other with lots of charges, predominantly negative uh, charges. Uh, and so they're they're hold, held in, in a, a relatively... Uh, uh, stable relationship to each other, uh, although everything is liquid. Uh, And uh, being uh, concentrated negative charges, uh, it's the opposite of a diluted solution, and so you automatically have a high degree of association between charged particles, uh, oppositely charged. Uh, So just the fact that you have a, a substance with an intrinsically high negative charge means that you're going to pull positively charged particles uh, out of the surrounding environment. And it works uh, just as well uh, for clay or or, uh, water softening gel or or hair. Uh, 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 Lots of conventional biologists uh, have simply uh, preferred to be ignorant about about the physics uh, of solid substances such as clay, uh, water softeners, uh, and hair. But uh, if you uh, thoroughly wash a substance such as hair uh, and uh, then dip it into serum uh, or a solution containing both uh, uh, sodium and, and potassium, uh, ions, for example, uh, the hair will selectively take up uh, potassium ions out of solution, uh, r- relatively excluding uh, sodium ions. And uh, that's something that uh, uh, the, the mainstream biologists uh, for several decades have simply not wanted to look at. They, they say that there's a semi-permeable a barrier doing that, letting in uh, one kind of uh, ion, uh, preferably uh, the uh, potassium, which has a lower uh, uh, surface uh, of uh, water, uh, attached to water molecules. And um, that that whole idea of a semi-permeable barrier membrane has been uh, discredited for, for now uh, about 80 years uh, thoroughly and repeatedly, but they just won't give it up. They, they insist that there are little motors at the surface uh, accounting for the uh, distribution, uh, unequal distri- distribution. Uh, long ago, uh, Gilbert Ling uh, showed that if you uh, block uh, the energy uh, systems of a cell. Uh, it, it still, j- just like air, hair being completely dead, will selectively associate uh, potassium. Uh, Ling demonstrated that uh, in uh, the state where the, the cell is uh, predominantly associated with potassium, the using uh, 
isotopes, he showed that uh, sodium is constantly entering the cell but being excluded. It goes in, but it goes out even faster. Uh, so it's it's a matter of uh, it's analogous to the solubility of something. Uh, A.S. Trotian, about the time uh, uh, Ling was working on his theory, uh, was working on uh, the, the idea of different solubilities uh, uh, governing uh, the properties of cells. Uh, and he showed that, uh, for example, uh, he, he could demonstrate that cells are not osmometers, which, uh, if there's a semi permeable membrane, uh, they have to behave as an osmometer, like uh, like an egg membrane. Uh, uh, it, it's a, a very thick uh, substance compared to the idea of a cell membrane, but you do uh, a dialysis membrane, for example, uh, made from an in intestine. It's uh, uh, not at all analogous to the hypothetical cell membrane. Uh, and and Trotian demonstrated that uh, urea, for example, will change the water content of a cell, but it is free to enter the cell, so it isn't it isn't uh, pulling water out uh, as an osmotic effect, but it enters the cell freely and, and simply changes the properties of the protein uh, system so that uh, less water is bound by, by the cell proteins. So for as the follow-up, uh, or one follow-up, is why does does any of this matter? Like, why does it matter that the, the membrane pumps and channels theory may be incorrect and that Gilbert's theory or something like it may be more correct? How, how does that sort of impact? Uh, well, the, the induction part of the hypothesis is that uh, everything that sticks to the protein uh, affects the electrical properties of the protein. Uh, and uh, uh, that applies literally to everything, other ions, hormones, metabolites, and so on. Uh, uh, carbon dioxide is an acid which affects the acidity of the protein, uh, and so if it uh, affects its uh, potassium uh, sodium affinity uh, once you see that the the system as a, a cooperative organized system is acting as a, a different phase uh, the, the whole substance of the cell is a, a coordinated cooperative uh, phase system and Everything you do to that phase is going to change its properties. Uh, the membrane, the, the basic assumption of, of the foolish uh, membrane hypothesis is that uh, cells uh, are controlled by that semi-permeable or pumping property of the uh, surface membrane because things, uh, the ions are equally randomly distributed on either side of the membrane. So you need something to, to account for why they are non-randomly distributed. Uh, Atrocian uh, saw it as uh, a simple matter of, of solubility, uh, but the association induction shows that the uh, specifically uh, the ions are uh, governed by the electrical properties of, of the proteins, which are influenced by everything. And so basically all of the mistaken uh, medical treatments uh, are the result of uh, bad reasoning uh, from, from the doctrine of a random solution uh, on the inside of the cell. Uh, randomness is essential to the the working uh, of the uh, the equations that are, are used to explain uh, cell potential and ionic distribution. Uh, and 
one one of my professors, for example, uh, Sidney Bernhardt, uh, spent his whole career and uh, a few years uh, after I left uh, graduate school, he, he pretty much finished what he had been working on, showing that even the uh, glycolytic mechanism uh, converting uh, uh, glucose to pyruvic acid or, or lactic acid, he showed that just by careful measurement of, of the substrate and the uh, proteins, he showed that uh, the assumption of randomness, which is the basis for all of the standard uh, uh, enzyme uh, uh, substrate interactions, uh, they are all based on statistical randomness. He showed that there is no possible uh, room for application of those equations because the substrate is uh, at about at the same concentration as the enzymes, uh, basically one substrate molecule per one enzyme. So the, the substrate has to be essentially handed directly from one protein to another rather than randomly diffusing. Uh, so all of the equations, assuming random diffusion, are irrelevant to biochemistry. That part seems really important, uh, sort of culturally. Could you talk just a little bit more about what it means, basically, to build everything on top of the wrong assumptions? Uh, uh, yeah, everything, uh, when I talk to uh, cardiologists or pulmonologists or uh, any of the specialties, uh, they build important therapeutic approaches on that assumption of a standard explanation of how enzymes work, uh, how uh, hormones act on cells, and so on. And, and uh, if if you follow uh, their reasoning, uh, you can connect uh, the uh, membrane theory and, and the random randomness theory to specific uh, mistakes that they make in their treatment. Uh, for, for example, uh, many most thyroid doctors uh, think of uh, a thyroid hormone as increasing uh, excitability rather than decreasing excitability of cells. Uh, and uh, carbon dioxide uh, metabolism in cells is usually 100%, 180 degrees uh, misinterpreted. Uh, because they they uh, uh, think of the equations of, of bicarbonate uh, rather than the intrinsically uh, acidic uh, modifying effects of the carbon dioxide itself acting on the, the cell structure. Could we do like a, a thought experiment as if, let's say, um, we're now like living in a world where doctors and scientists, biochemists, have decided to accept the AIH, or at least that as a starting point, how would you see that changing how medicine or research is done? They would um, start realizing that right at the center of cell structure and function, the energy process consisting of the production of carbon dioxide from fuel and oxygen, uh, that is the essential acidifying process that governs the structure of the cell, the potassium favoring uh, properties uh, of the cytoplasm, uh, and therefore the, the structure of the cytoplasm and the uh, readiness to work and be stimulated. Uh, uh, so it, it leads to uh, for example, seeing interpreting mania as a deficiency of cellular energy. Uh, epilepsy is a deficiency of cellular energy. Uh, when when things are uh, overactive, it's because they uh, don't have the energizing uh, structural effects uh, of oxidative metabolism all the way to carbon dioxide. 
uh, and so muscle cramps, uh, heart, uh, hardening of the heart muscle, uh, losing uh, uh, contractive uh, force, uh, 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 nerve, nerve uh, uh, symptoms, a uh, great variety of nerve symptoms, uh, kidney malfunction, uh, every system you look at, uh, the uh, approach to treating it uh, comes down to uh, optimizing uh, the energy which regulates the uh, the pH ion selectivity and, and fuel selectivity. Do you think that it, it would also, continuing this exper- thought experiment, um, how would it trickle down scientists sort of using the, or considering the AIH as the, the hypothesis uh, to pharmaceuticals and pharmaceutical in, pharmaceutical industry drugs, would those be different and how research is done on them be different in treating some chronic diseases? The drug research industry is, is so far uh, unrelated to reality that uh, m- many other things could uh, abolish essentially our whole drug industry because it's uh, corrupt uh, and uh, based on nothing but, but selling uh, substitute products for uh, basically uh, uh, old uh, herbal and biological uh, drugs that were available 100 years ago uh, could substitute for our multi-billion or trillion dollar uh, drug industry. Do you, do you think considering the AIH or taking it seriously um, could affect some chronic diseases, people suffering with them like Alzheimer's or cancer? Or heart disease? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly the same as epilepsy, heart disease, kidney disease, uh, lung disease, and, and so on. Uh, uh, Gilbert Ling, uh, one of his uh, articles or, or books several years ago was uh, Cancer Won't Be Solved <laughs> Along the Present Line of, of Thinking. Uh, it, it's, uh, if you don't know uh, Gilbert Ling's work, uh, thoroughly, uh, it's hard to understand the I- idiocy uh, behind uh, contemporary uh, uh, last uh, 80 years of biological uh, and medical uh, thinking. It's a, a type of insanity that is reinforced by the culture, the fact that it can make vast profits. And then another smaller important piece to me seems that you get a different understanding of how life works that at the smallest level all you really need is this the association of of water and proteins and, and yeah fuel fuel ox, ox, oxygen and uh, sugar are the equivalent uh, and um uh, sydney fox's uh, demonstration that uh hot uh, amino acids put, put on a hot rock will spontaneously polymerize into protein-like molecules. Uh, randomness uh, doesn't uh, uh, occur anywhere in the origin of life. Uh, the, the whole assumption of randomness uh, uh, associated with the Darwinian uh, uh, approach. Uh, Sidney Fox showed that a, a random a mixture of amino acids polymerizes spontaneously in the protein-like elongated molecules that if you put water on uh, that hot uh, proto-protein uh, substance, it uh, produces a very symmetrical uh, uh, cell-like particles about the size of a big bacterium spontaneously uh, forming these uh, uh, spheres, microspheres, uh, and these, uh, the, the spontaneously formed proteins have enzyme-like functions, uh, and he showed that uh, precursors of the nucleic acids could be polymerized by these spontaneously formed uh, amino acids. Uh, uh, it, it's just a, a chemical, physical way of, of showing that the assumption of randomness is basically a, a crazy religious doctrine that was built in 200 years ago in the conventional uh, science thinking uh, for religious reasons, uh, such as the Big Bang. Uh, 
they had a creation theory, and so they fitted their physics to it. Uh, the thermodynamic uh, thinking, uh, likewise, uh, was fitted to associate uh, the idea that uh, God created a universe and that it has been running down ever since, ever since uh, tending toward entropy. Uh, with no, no basis other than uh, religious assumptions. Uh, that the uh, alternative, uh, it isn't uh, necessarily an anti-Christian idea, but it's associated with Hinduism, is that the universe is alive and may be growing, and uh, that the uh, randomness in the universe tends to be decreasing rather than increasing, if anything. Let's talk in terms of like metaphors or analogy. I liked how you, you said the the pumps and channels is like the there being motors or engines on the surface of the cell or another, uh, something that, that Pollock had said, pumps and channels, it's sort of like doggy doors um, that only let in certain sized dogs. Um, what would be an analogy? And they have to have an attendant to uh, push the, the wrong dogs out. <laughs> right. What would be an analogy for the AIH in that sense then? Um, it's uh, uh, say, say you have a thermostat and uh, uh, food growing inside uh, the, the house. Uh, if you uh, have the right kind of temperature and food, the right uh, dog will come in. Uh, uh, a dog that can't can't digest. Uh, uh, beans, for example, might be excluded if you're uh, only growing beans in the house. It's a matter of affinity, uh, not not uh, selectivity in, in the sense of a, a doggy door. Yeah, I like that. And then sort of going from there, um, and this might be a hard task, but in in just like a couple sentences, could you say how the AIH differs from the the pumps and channels theory? It's, um, if you look at nature, uh, hair, uh, uh, clay, uh, and anything that is a, a, a selective uh, iron, iron preferring substance, uh, you, you simply see that that's a natural property of, of nature. Uh, uh, for example, uh, soil uh, prefers to associate with potassium, uh, and the sodium washes out and gets into the ocean. So, if, if you wonder why why soil contains potassium and, and the ocean is full of sodium, uh, you have to start thinking: uh, why is a cell full of potassium and, and the serum full of sodium? It's simply a physical preference. Uh, uh, the structure and electrical properties of the solid matter, uh, uh, the solidity being anchored in space, uh, is uh, governs the uh, t- tendency to associate more fully. Uh, dilution uh, changes the tendency to associate and and dissociate things. Uh, uh, the uh, given a, a, a solid matrix, uh, uh, potassium uh, throughout uh, the, the world, so, uh, soil tends to pre- uh, prefer to associate with uh, potassium. How did you first hear of the AIH? What were you doing, um, you know, research-wise or scientifically? I had um, just enrolled in graduate school, and I was taking. Uh, my first course in nerve biology. And uh, as the lectures went on, by about the fourth week, I decided that the professor giving the standard line was a crackpot. And he would refer us to papers in the 50s and 40s and 30s. Each time he referred us to a paper that uh, he said was was the the origin uh, of the thinking that he was expounding on. I would look through the journal and uh, see what people were saying at the same time, and I realized that most 
of the other articles sounded better than the ones he was referring to us. And uh, so as weeks went by, uh, I, I read more and more uh, about the history, uh, look, looking at the articles he would refer to us. Uh, then I would uh, read the whole rest of the journal, and I, I uh, started seeing Gilbert Ling's uh, work uh, around 1950 and, and on. I realized that he was solving all of the problems that were evident in what was being taught in 1968. So I wrote to him and outlined the problems that he had obviously solved and said, how is this? These people are going on about this membrane regulation. And his answer was, you just don't understand science. Uh, science is about money and, and prestige and power. It has nothing to do with understanding reality accurately. And would, would you say that without adjusting our understanding of the basic model, that we'll kind of be at a, a standstill? Yeah, they'll never get any further. I'm just... More, more and more drugs and and techniques, uh, but uh, n never any progress uh, against uh, preventing and curing heart disease, kidney disease, lung disease, brain disease, and and so on. Why why does it seem like Gilbert has been the only one who has offered this complete alternate model of the cell? It seems like he's just this lone voice in the wilderness, and now that he's passed on, will this all be forgotten? Oh, oh no, there, there, all along there have been people that were just uh, less diligent and energetic in doing the work. Uh, uh, Troshan, his uh, basic book on sorption is something everyone should read. Uh, it will uh, revolutionize your, your thinking as much as Gilbert Ling's. Uh, uh, it just happens that uh, Ling uh, covered the, all of the essential arguments that the membrane people ha have uh, offered their bad solutions to uh, and does it in a very elegant way. Besides that one letter that you wrote to him and that you got a reply from, did you two ever chat or, or exchange more letters or chat on the phone? Um, yeah, I wrote to him a couple of times uh, and talked to him uh, once at a meeting in New York. Uh, I noticed he, uh, I think it was in, in the 90s, I asked him a question about carbon dioxide, and he, he said, I, I have uh, enjoyed your letters <laughs> as if it had been a, a regular thing, but he kept a good file of who had written to him, obviously. Is there a chance that Gilbert's wrong and the AIH is wrong or some parts of it? Um, well, in the 1970s, I, I wrote him and asked him if uh, he didn't think uh, that uh, Michael Polanyi's adsorption uh, isotherm would be more appropriate uh, for explaining cells uh, than the sort of elaborate uh, uh, London Langmuir uh, theory I think he was using. Uh, and he said, no, this wouldn't work, so all right. Uh, but uh, I, I, if I was uh, starting out uh, where he started, I, I would have used uh, uh, Polanyi's uh, isotherm because it, it uh, gives an image uh, of a long-range potential that he takes a lot of mass to arrive at where the pull on the isotherm would give you a sketchy approach to it right from the start. Yeah, one thing that we have noticed in this journey is that um, it, I don't know if it's the way that Gilbert uh, breaks things down or if it's just that the hypothesis is so complicated, but it seems like it, um, he hasn't done a great job of communicating it to 
people, especially lay people. I, the membrane theory is so easy for lay people to understand. It, 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 it is, I don't think it is easy for anyone to understand. It, uh, it's so... Uh, uh, the, the, there are only a, a few uh, membranes that uh, will make it work that, that uh, resemble in any way the, the hypothetical membrane. Uh, and uh, the phospholipid uh, bilayer membrane, it, it, all kinds of facts uh, contradict it. So uh, intuitively, uh, it's uh, impossible uh, to have any substance to it and conceive it. Uh, uh, the, the way it stains uh, indicates uh, that it can't possibly be what the hypothesis says it is. Uh, nothing supports it except uh, that their assertion that it's there doing something. Do you feel, though, that w- was it a f- sort of failure on Gilbert's part of communicating or writing about his theory that, you know, so many people just sort of couldn't get through it or understand it? Uh, and no, um, I didn't think it was uh, at all uh, hard hard to see what he was doing. Uh, uh, I, I didn't have any background in uh, school biology at all when I started, but uh, it was uh, since I didn't have that background, it was immediately obvious that the whole. Uh, membrane pump thing was was phony and I- impossible to believe. Uh, it's only uh, uh, this sort of re- religious uh, uh, bit background uh, of assumptions. Uh, it's all built on uh, uh, assumptions that are dogmatically uh, proclaimed. The random selection of genes, for example, in Darwinism, uh, totally uh, counter-empirical. Uh, uh, it's, it's all a religious set of assumptions. One thing I wanted to ask was, because I know that you keep up with uh, a lot of different spheres of research that are going on and new studies that are coming out, have you noticed that any AIH-like uh, theories or experiments have been going on that are getting some more mainstream traction or anything you've seen that you're sort of hopeful about? A guy in, in Germany at Ulm University, uh, um, Andre, I think it is, Summer, S-O-M-M-E-R, uh, is doing uh, uh, the um, organized water in, in cells uh, approach. And uh, at MIT uh, in in physics, uh, uh, Jeremy England is taking the approach uh, that uh, order builds itself spontaneously uh, given the flow of energy. Uh, uh, that that approach is uh, basically uh, denying uh, th- this 200-year-long assumption that matter. Uh, is uh, an inert, uh, randomly uh, uh, moving uh, uh, something. Uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the the idea that order is intrinsic to matter uh, is is a big assumption that that has to be changed. Uh, yeah, the, the idea that an atom is uh, identical at all points of time and everywhere in every context is a, a purely platonic uh, idealist uh, doctrine, no no evidence whatsoever. Uh, it, it is saying that uh, uh, the elements of matter are, are nothing but a, a mathematical uh, 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 change, changeless uh, thing uh, until they change, and the change is only described by uh, uh, a randomness uh, describing statistical approach. Uh, e- even Leibniz would would have a better uh, grasp of of reality in seeing that everything depends on its relationship to other things. Every atom is slightly different, 
uh, depending on where and when it is. Uh, the, the inductive effect uh, uh, says that uh, every atom is sensitive to its surroundings uh, and uh, that sort of thing. Uh, uh, when, once you have the membrane assumption that things move randomly inside of cells, uh, even Leibniz's recognition uh, would uh, tear down the whole, whole approach. Do you have any hope whatsoever that something like the AIH or the AIH will eventually one day be taken seriously? Uh, yeah. If, um, uh, if the next election, for example, could theoretically overthrow the, the whole uh, uh, drug uh, medical establishment and establish by by a uh, legislation, uh, the insistence on being empirical and rational in everything uh, done in in research. Who do you think would do that? Theoretically, uh, Bernie Sanders could, could uh, say, uh, "Look at all of this uh, criminal uh, waste of of resources uh, on." Uh, uh, phony medical approaches, phony military approaches. Uh, uh, there would be roughly $20 trillion a year uh, left to do something intelligent. <laughs> right. That would be amazing. Well, thank you so much, Ray. Yeah, we really appreciate your time. Oh.